Hello, y'all. It's time for another little something from Jason Sims. Listen to it with someone you love or like or at least tolerate or just listen alone. Do what you like. Several of you have been very supportive of this thing from the beginning, and I appreciate that. But I realized a while back that I hadn't thanked the dude without whom this thing probably wouldn't even exist. So I hereby thank one John Solomon of Princeton, New Jersey. I had so much fun uh, recording this little audio piece for his annual Christmas show uh, that he does on radio station WPRB up in Princeton uh, that I decided to record more little audio pieces. And so here we are. John is a renaissance man. He is the head of Comedy Minus One Records as well as the leader of a shadowy worldwide cabal of seltzer enthusiasts, of which I am one. And that last bit is not a joke. Go Google now fizzing sometime, and you can see. Or you can can bing it as well, I guess, if that's what you're into. So thanks, John, and thanks to all of you who shared the links to this thing or send along kind words or just take the time to listen. Y'all are the best. Like many other guys who have beards, sip scotch, and occasionally smoke a pipe, I style myself a a bit of an independent scholar. The way I see it, since I hold no advanced degrees from any accredited institutions of higher learning, I am free from the biases and groupthink which often blind more establishment thinkers. I recently finished a short paper on the development of the form that we call stand-up comedy, which I had planned to present at this year's Actually Fest. Actually Fest is an independent scholarship conference that's held at a Ramada Inn in Akron, Ohio. Unfortunately, I just got word that it was canceled due to very disappointing pre-registration numbers and not being able to find a reputable fedora vendor. It's very sad. So I'm just going to present it here. The title of my paper is A Brief History of Yucks, colon, The Evolution of Stand-Up Comedy, semicolon, a, quote, true American, close quote, art form, question mark. So here's the paper. Stand-Up Comedy a phrase that rolls off the tongues of Sally and Joe Average of Averagetown, USA, with very little thought as to how these words became so united that they roll off their tongues with very little thought. Why comment on the orientation of the body of the person who's telling the jokes? The names of other forms of comedy, sketch or improv, for example, are descriptive of how the comedy gets made, not the posture of the performers. Why is stand-up different? Additionally, stand-up is often mentioned in the same breath with jazz and the all-you-can-eat buffet as one of the few uniquely American contributions to world culture. Is this true? Or could stand-up's origins be older and less American than we suspect? Let's delve into the dim corridors of time and see if we can scare up any answers. Unless you're afraid of the dark or the truth. The first mention of anything like professional comedians shows up in the historical record surprisingly early. The famous accounting tablet of Ur, which has been dated back to at least 2000 BCE and inventories the holdings of the Babylonian king Ur-Namu, mentions people who were paid to be guests at feasts and amuse their fellow diners. In the ancient world, people reclined on the floor to eat and so did these performers. These first comics were the purveyors of an art form known as reclining comedy. A reclining comics material mainly centered around gossip, the quality of the food, and I'm afraid to say a lot of fart jokes. To be honest, it was like 95% fart jokes. It was a simpler time. Reclining comedy remained the norm until the rise of the Roman Empire. And there was nothing funny about the Roman Empire, okay? I don't care what you've heard. End of subject. I'm firm on this, 
Don't at me, Stuart. Sorry. The next class of comedy professionals to emerge were what were commonly known as jesters, or fools, in the courts of medieval Europe. Now, these names were in use in their day, but they were also known as sit-down comics. Most jesters were small, and a lot of their gags involved them sitting on or in things for a laugh. Some sat in tiny chairs, or in the laps of ladies, or on the head of the king. A famous 11th century Byzantine jester, known as Bryennios the Silly, was small enough as to be able to ride on a turtle, while Portugal's most famous 14th century fool, Skippy Witto, was so tiny he could sit on a standard tomato. In fact, members of the court would often bring their own tomatoes for him to sit on. Tragically, he was actually crushed to death by a tomato thrown by a courtier in 1353 after he made a poorly timed joke about the Black Plague. So we have Skippy to thank for the origin of not only the great comedy tradition of throwing tomatoes at bad comics, but also the term dying on stage, as well as the phrase, too soon, which were his final words. Now, only one sit-down comic was more controversial than Skippy Witto, uh, a young English fool who performed in the early 1400s under the name Sir Sitzelot. Sir Sitzelot was really too big to be a jester. I mean, he could only sit in normal-sized chairs. In fact, his big finisher was sitting on a milking stool, which sometimes broke under his weight. Facing continued failure, one evening he did the unthinkable. He stood up. To understand why this is such a big deal, one must understand the intricate rules of the medieval court. Well, really, you only have to understand one rule. Only the king and his immediate family were allowed to stand upright. Everyone else had to take an inferior posture. Now, major nobles could get away with a slight slouch, you know, whereas the lowest serfs had to crawl on their bellies and lick dust like snakes. Poor Sir Sitzelot had barely started his chunk about carriage food when a royal guard of King Henry V seized him and beheaded him on the spot. And then his head was nailed to the seat of a chair. And then that chair was impaled on a pike. And then that pike was left outside the jester's guild hall as a warning. And they got the message because nobody stood up to tell jokes again for a long time after that. But it is my contention that stand-up comedy is not an original American art form. And to prove it, I will now produce the skull of Sir Sitzelot still nailed to the chair to which it was nailed. Behold! And at that point, I would have you know, pulled back a curtain to reveal the chair with the skull, you know, nailed to it, which I technically don't have yet, but I've got some leads, and I'm sure I could have found it or, you know, a suitable facsimile before I actually fest, but I guess that's a moot point now because there's not even going to be an actually fest. Although, it'd be kind of a cool thing to have in your house. So, like, if anybody knows where a fella could get a thing like that. Anyway, that's the paper. Thank you for your attention. I'm done talking now. <laughs>